Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth and we're going to get into a little right triangle trig here in your first intro lesson in chapter 9 before we get into non-right triangle trig where we get into law of cosines and law of cosines and some heavy duty triangle trig. Okay, so this is an easy one. It'll give you a build some confidence here and uh, this you should theoretically already know but it's a good review before we get into something that deals with non-right triangles. Okay, which is where we're headed. But let's go ahead and go through the basics on, on right triangle trigonometry here. And this relies upon your knowledge of, of Sokotoa and your definitions of sine, the cosine and tangent, which you already know because we are in a pre-calculus. Yes, I'm talking to all of my pre-calc -pre peeps. All right, I'm talking to you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and label the diagram first. Okay, we have three angles and they're all capitalized, A, B, and C, where C is the right angle here. And opposite of the angle is the side in lowercase. So opposite of angle A is lowercase a. All right, opposite of side B is lower lowercase b or side b. And then opposite of side C is C, all right, and C is already known. So we need to solve for A and B. We also need to solve for angle A, which is the easy part. Okay, so let's do the easy part first, okay? I know that angles A and B, the acute angles, these are always complementary. Something that you uh, already know, complementary. And that simply means is that they sum to 90. Something that you already know, all the way back to geometry, okay? So, uh, measure of angle A. Okay, so the measure of angle A is equal to 90 minus 58, all right? which happens to be 32 degrees, okay, 32 degrees. Uh, so we know we know the angle. Now all we have to do is figure out the side lengths. And so we're going to use some basic uh, trick, okay? So we know that sine is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. We know the cosine is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And we know the tangent is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. So we know the basic definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent, because we know Sokotoa, okay? All right, and then we also need a graphing calculator or a scientific calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Desmos here. If you don't have a T84 or scientific, no problem, because you just go online, you get your computer, phone, iPad, whatever, up and up Desmos scientific, not the graphing, but the scientific, and you'll see this. All right, and that's what I'm going to be using uh, here. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to solve uh, for A first, just for funsies, okay? So I'm going to find A, and I know that A is adjacent uh, to the angle, and 14, that's the hypotenuse, okay? So I'm going to use cosine. So I know that the cosine of 58 degrees, all right, is equal to A divided by 14. So A divided by 14, all right? And therefore, if I multiply both sides by 14, A is equal to 14, times the cosine of 58 degrees, all right? And I'm not always going to show my work, but okay, I multiplied both sides by 14. That's all I did. Okay, and you get 14 times the cosine of 58, and that's what you enter in the calculator. So 14, 14 times cosine of 58 degrees. We're in degrees right here. Notice on the calculator here. So 14 times the cosine of 58 degrees is roughly 7.41. And we're supposed to round to the nearest tenth, so 17, oh, excuse me, 7, 7.418. So that's about 7.4 rounded to the nearest tenth. So A is approximately, A is approximately, okay, because I rounded uh, 7.4, roughly, to the nearest tenth. All right, that, read the directions now. It asks us to round to the nearest tenth. All right, okay, next one. Uh, I need to find B using the same angle. I don't want to use a rounded answer here, by the way, so keep that in mind. Do not use a rounded answer in your next calculation. So even though you could use A in your calculation for B, don't use it, okay? Uh, use the exact numbers, okay? Never use a rounded answer for your next calculation unless you have to. All right, so to find B, B is opposite of the angle, okay? So it's opposite. So I take the sine of angle B, so the sine of 58 degrees, all right, and that's equal to B divided by the hypotenuse, which is 14, 
And if I multiply both sides by 14, like I did the previous one here, I get 14 times the sine of 58 equals b. Okay, so b is equal to 14 times the sine of 58 degrees, which is approximately something. So let's go to Desmos and let's type it in. Uh, 14 sine 58. Okay, so 14 times the sine of 58 degrees. Oops. Didn't, you got to do it right. So 14 times the sine uh, 58 degrees. Uh, and you get about 11.9. Okay, that you got around to the nearest tenth in the direction. So 11.9. Okay, so uh, 11.9 is B. So there we go. So I've got the uh, two sides that were unknown. I have the unknown angle, which is angle A is 32 degrees. This little angle right here is 32 degrees. It's complement of 58. And there you go. That's how you solve the triangle. That's what solving the triangle means, okay? It means find the, all the unknown parts. And every angle, excuse me, every triangle has three sides and three angles. So when anybody says solve the triangle, it means find all the unknown sides and angles. That's what it means. Okay, solve the triangle. Find, okay, all three sides and angles. There we go. All right, so the next one here, I'm going to label it first. So opposite of A is little a, opposite of C is little c, and opposite of B is known as 13. Okay, so let's do the easy one first. The measure of angle A is 90 minus the 56. All right, we're talking degrees here, and that's going to be 34 degrees. So if I wanted to use that angle, I could, but I'm just going to use angle B because it's there, just for funsies. Okay, I'm going to solve for A first. So I know that opposite, okay, of the angle B is 13. The adjacent side is unknown. It's A, and that calls for the tangent function. So I'm going to take the tangent of 56 degrees now, and it's going to be equal to 13 divided by A. Okay, I multiply by A, always the denominator, and then I divide, whoops, I'm going to separate the steps here. So I have A times the tangent of 56 degrees is equal to 13 divided by the tangent of 56 degrees. And I get A is equal to this right here, 13 divided by the tangent 56 degrees. That's the exact answer. And then you need to calculate that. So you take 13 divided by the tangent of 56 degrees. Let me make sure I put that in correctly. Yep. Okay. And then I get about 8.8 .8 roughly on the side length. So that side length is approximately 8.8. .8. So that's my first result. Got A. Now I got to find C, the hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm going to use 13. I'm not going to use 8.8 because, as I said before in the first one here, never use a rounded answer for your next calculation unless you have to. So use 13. So opposite hypotenuse calls for sine. So the sine of 56 degrees is equal to 13 divided by C. And that means i got to multiply by C. Sorry. And then I get C times the sine of 56 degrees is equal to 13 divided by the sine of 56 degrees. And I get C is equal to 13 divided by the sine of 56. Then you got to calculate that too. So you type it in. All right, make sure you typed it in correctly. So I think I did. <clears throat> and that's roughly 15.7. Okay, so uh, it's approximately 15.7. And that's equal C. All right, so I found the hypotenuse, I found the shortest side, and I found the unknown angle. And I solved the triangle. So this is the, basically what solving the triangle means. It finds all the sides, all the angles. All three sides, all three angles. And you're going to be doing that throughout the lessons in lessons uh, uh, three and four. When we talk about law of sines and cosines and we deal with non-right triangles, we're going to do the same thing. Okay. Now, problems three and four, same idea, but they give you 
uh, just the information here, and you have to solve the triangle around the answers to the nearest tenth again and include a diagram. So we got a hypotenuse here. C is always a hypotenuse. And we got A, and I don't know if A is the shortest side or not, but I'm just going to draw a figure here. Okay, so hypotenuse is 12. So that's C, this is A, and this is B. And then let's say A is 7, so that's 7 there, and I don't know what little, I don't know what side B is. So here I know two sides uh, only, and I don't know any angles, which means I have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So, uh, well, you don't have to actually, there's other ways to do it, but probably the easiest way is to use the Pythagorean theorem and then go from there. So I'm gonna do that. So B squared plus seven squared is equal to 12 squared. So I get B squared plus 49 is equal to 144. And I get B squared, if you subtract 49 from 144, you do it in your head. Uh, you should get 95, so you can verify that if you want. So 144 minus, uh, what was it, uh, 49. So you type in 49, you should get that. Okay, and you do. All right, and so you square root both sides, and you get B is the square root of 95, which is approximately equal to, let's take the square root of 95, boom. Round it to the nearest tenth, thinking about 9.7. Okay, so now we know that. So we know we know the side length is about 9.7. And we got to find, uh, so this is B. So we know this right here. Now we got to find angles A and B. And like I said before in the previous problems, you don't want to use a rounded answer to find the angle. So if I want to find angle B first, let's say, which is probably what I should do, but it actually doesn't matter. Uh, if I use angle B, if I find angle B, uh, and so get your focus point right here, uh, this right, this is the adjacent sign, and this is the hypotenuse, which means I could use the cosine function if I wanted to. So the cosine of angle B is equal to 7 twelfths. And then as you know, when you find an angle, you got to take the inverse. So you take the inverse cosine of 7 twelfths, and then you round it to the nearest tenth, as it says in the directions right here. So let's take the inverse cosine, okay, of 7 twelfths, 7 divided by 12, and we get about 54.3 degrees, 54.3 degrees. So 54.3 degrees. Now, to get the other angle, okay, you just know it's complementary, right? So angle A is equal to 90 minus, 90 degrees minus 54.3 degrees. And if you wanted to use a calculator, I suppose you could. 90 minus the previous one, 54.3. All right, should give you 35.7. So, so 35.7 degrees. There we go. So measure of angle A. Okay, and you got measure of angle B here. All right, so you got angle B, you got angle A, and you got all three sides, you're good to go. Okay, number four, let's continue here. So here we go. Uh, we know an angle now and the opposite side of it. So let's draw a triangle. All right, so a little figure here. Okay, now if uh, angle A is here, it's 27 degrees. Angle B is here. C is always the right angle. Okay, opposite of A is little a. Opposite of B is little b. And we're ready to go. Whoops, A is 10. Okay, we already know that one. So it's given A as 10. Okay, so uh, we need to find angle B first. Let's do the easy stuff first. So angle B is the complement. Um, so 90 minus uh, 27 degrees, that would be, what, 63 degrees? All right, so we could use this angle if we wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to use angle A just for funsies. Uh, 
So angle A in respect to angle A, so our focus point is here, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse, and this is the opposite side. Okay, so if I wanted to solve for B first, I could uh, use uh, tan the opposite side and the adjacent side. Okay, that calls for tangent. So the tangent of 27 degrees is equal to 10 divided by B. So multiply both sides by B, and you get B times the tangent of 27 degrees is equal to 10. And then you divide by the tangent of 27 degrees and see what you get. So 10 divided by the tangent of 27 degrees. Let me make sure that's correct. So, yeah. Uh, is about 19.6, looking good. So B is approximately, what did I just say, 19.6. All right, we have, a, uh, we have one of the sides. Now we have two of the sides. And this is rounded, all right, so we don't want to use that. Uh, okay, so I want to use 10 and C. So the opposite and the hypotenuse, that's sine. So I'm going to switch to the sine function and take the sine of 27 degrees and set that equal to 10 divided by C, and then multiply both sides by C, and I get C times the sine of 27 degrees is equal to 10, and then divide by the sine of 27 degrees. Oops. There we go. Sine of 27 degrees, and you get C is approximately equal to whatever that is, so 10 divided by the sine, 27 degrees, just type it in, and you get about 22, okay? Rounded to the nearest tenth, so this is roughly 22. And that's what solving the triangle is all about. Whenever it says that, and you're going to see this throughout the, uh, the chapter here, and where whether we work with right triangles or non-right triangles, which is where we're headed, uh, you have to find all three sides and all three angles. The last two problems are simple. Just is find the trig value of the uh, indicated function. And this relies upon your definition of sine. So sine is the opposite divided by hypotenuse, cosine adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent opposite divided by adjacent. So here I'm looking for the sine of theta, and theta is given here. Here's theta. So opposite of that is 15, and the hypotenuse is given to be 25. So I know that the sine of theta is 15 twenty fifths. Reduce that, you can divide both by five and you get three fifths. Now this one here, opposite of theta is eight and the hypotenuse is 17. And it asked me to find secant. Now secant uh, theta is, whoops, uh, theta is equal to 1 divided by cosine of theta or the reciprocal of cosine. So if I know that the cosine of theta, which is unknown right here, uh, uh, well, I need to know the adjacent side, right? And we don't know it. So I'm going to give this a name temporarily here and use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus 8 squared is equal to 17 squared. Square those guys. Subtract 64. You get x squared is equal to 25. And so that tells me that x is 5. So now I know that this side's 5. And so this right here, if I know that the cosine of theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, which is 5 17 okay, 1 divided by 5 17 is the same thing as the reciprocal of it, which is 17 fifths. Okay? So yes, you got to kick in a little Pythagorean theorem work right there, guys. All right, right here I'm talking about. That is the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. All right, and that's how it's done. Um, that's all I assigned. It's just the intro lesson here. And remember, this is a video, right? So you may watch it again if you like or go back to any part that was... Uh, vague okay and do your best okay and then upload your lesson and your homework all together as one file up into the Google Drive or what's called the Google Classroom okay I'll see you in the next hangout look forward to seeing you guys all right bye bye